Hi, my name's Kent Curry, Rugby Development Manager for the Waikato Rugby Union. I'm here to talk about club rugby, and to help me do that is none other than Scott Couch. Welcome, Couchy. Uh, thanks very much, Kent. How's it going? Good, thanks, mate. Hey, just uh, can you guys get his jaw on the camera here? Is, uh, you're right? Okay. Hey, just before we, yeah, yeah. Hey, just before we uh, start, mate, um, it's your second year in the coaching role for university. Yes, is, yep. You've been a professional player with Waikato and also the Chiefs. What's the transition like being... From a, being a player, then going on to becoming a coach. Well, as you as you recall, uh, Kent, I actually didn't play a hell of a lot professionally. Um, spent most of my time watching, so it hasn't changed that much, to be honest. Yeah. So uh, the only difference is, is these guys have to do what I say now, whereas before they just looked at me and laughed. Yeah. Is that right? Because I noticed you used to wear number seventeen, was it? No, number nineteen's my jersey. Kent. Number nineteen. Yeah, and yeah. why can't are actually thinking about retiring that jersey? Well, they should really. I most kept uh, number nineteen um, ever. For Waikato, so uh, yeah, yeah, 45 games for 45 minutes. No, <laughs> that's all good. Hey, mate, uh, just a question for you. The government have changed the the lump sum withdrawal student loan system in the last couple of years, and I know back in 2002 when you actually made the final that particular year that it actually did benefit a lot of your players. Uh, Carl, Carl Moran, Maza Marcroft, Tony Niven, and yourself. Yep. What are you guys doing for recruitment now? Well, it's actually funny you say that because the only reason that it helped our game was because we couldn't go down and uh, make a phone call to the student loan people and uh, get $400 in our account the next day to get us through that weekend um, at the Outback. Uh, so, so what actually happened was, was there was no money to drink anymore, so we actually had to concentrate on our footy a, a lot. Um, these days, um, these guys are used to that now and they find all other ways to make money. Our recruitment scheme this, this year was to get the cheerleading girls down um, we dressed them in, in uh, university colours, such as these ones, and we had them out, um, had them out parading, giving out flyers, saying, "Come and play for uni." Yeah, let's just say it didn't quite work <laughs> the way we planned. <laughs> That's good, yeah. mate. Hey, look, you're coaching with Stephen Donald, who's obviously yes, um, a current All Black and a current Chiefs player. How are the boys taken to Stephen? Oh, they hate him. Yeah, absolutely hate him. Yeah, no, actually, he's doing really, really well. It's, it's great. He's a great man to coach with. Actually, he, he sort of takes over. I, I. I take a backward step when he's around. Um, the boys are in awe of him. You know, um, he knows what he's talking about, where I don't. Um, yeah, so it's been an absolute pleasure to have him coming along. And I mean, for a guy of that calibre to take time out and to come down, you know, I'd say he's a busy man, but none of these professional rugby players are busy. And anyone watching at home, um, don't, if anyone's, when any one of them tells you that they are busy, they're just not, okay? They get, trade, uh, they, they get paid to get abs, you know, and play rugby once a week. Fantastic job. Because you had great abs in your professional days, did Just you one. We only needed one in those days, though. Yeah, <laughs> apparently you need six to eight now. Yeah, yeah different, different game. It's quite a good question, actually, eh? Like, you've had to make the transition from professional rugby player, and now you have to make your way in the world. How's that been going for you? It's uh, hard, yeah, very hard. Um, I actually, uh, my first job out of rugby was actually working for the rugby union. I was their sales manager for a while there, so... Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a tough ask for a lot of these guys, you know, to, and it's, it's, the, it's the change in salaries and stuff. I was actually playing in Japan yeah. um, before I got one too many knocks on the Swede. So, you know, that, you know coming back into the real world and, and earning real, real world money um, is it it extremely hard for guys. Yeah. Hey, just moving on, mate. Tim Mickelson came up with a genius idea last year. You guys have struggled for funds and, you know, you're not like every other club who, who have blazer blazers and number ones and all that type of thing and if you play so many games you, you earn yourself a blazer so Tim Mickelson came up with the idea that let's all go out and get op shop blazers and uh, let's put the university badge on it and uh, how's that how's that gone for the boys? Uh, actually fantastic uh, Tim Mickelson actually didn't actually come up with the idea it's just the fact that he shops there regularly uh, so he's, he's in there he's in there and, and um, someone must have said to him wow that looks kind of good in a weird sort of way so actually, that's how it all started, and, and in the end, you're right, it came down to money. And uh, these boys, you know, a couple of bucks for an for a old man's blazer was a lot better than forking out 100 bucks for one, and they would never have done it. So, yeah, it's become a bit of a varsity tradition now, and hopefully one that continues. Yeah. Hey, have you guys got a realistic opportunity to make the, the semis this year, and who are some of your players to look out for, Couchy? Mate, I reckon we actually do. You know, people might laugh at that, but we, our forward pack, I think, this year will will compete with any forward pack that, that, that's around. I think our loose forwards are probably the best in the competition. Uh, we've got Eli Atkins, who's just outstanding. To me, that guy could be an All Black one day. Um, we've got Sione at number eight, fantastic player, and he's come on really, really well. I think this academy thing 
um, that they do at the moment, the Waikato Academy guys. Um, them going through that, you just see the change in attitude in these fellas and, and how much more professional they are. Uh, and we've got uh, Fidu Douglas on our blind side. Um, that guy's just gone to New Zealand 20s trials. So really that's the key to our game is, is we're really strong as forwards. What we've got now that we didn't have in the past is we've actually got quite a good, uh, a good second row and, and a solid front row as well, which we haven't had. So I, I think we'll give quite a few teams a run for our money and I, I wouldn't, you know, be an outside chance of making that top four. That's great, mate. Hey, Couch, we we got to go, but thanks very much for your time. Good luck for the season, and uh, you're a great character to have in the community game. And, uh, yeah, all the best. Thanks very much, Ken. No worries. Absolute pleasure. Ochirhonga ended up beating Fraser Tech last Saturday. For more information, go to mulucommunityrugby.co.nz. That's enough for the Natter here in Matamata. Katrina will be back with you after the break. <laughs>